Hello, this is the TI-84 guy. I'm back again. Um, and I want to just demonstrate a uh, program that I think would be uh, very useful on um, the SAT, ACT, SAT um, subject, uh, math subject level one or level two exam. Um, I'm just going to jump right in and kind of demonstrate it. Um, what I have here is I have an, um, an old uh, ACT exam and the question that I'm looking at is number 59. It says, the sum of the first 30 positive integers is 465. Which of the following, fo which of the following is the sum of the first 60 positive integers? So this is a um, arithmetic sequence or actually an arithmetic series um, because we're looking at consecutive positive integers and we want to know the sum of the first 60. Um, if you know the formulas for this it's pretty straightforward, but a lot of students don't remember the formula for series, um, arithmetic or geometric series, so that's what makes this a 59 problem. Um, how I would do it is I would use my program. Let me turn on the calculator. I'm going to get rid of this. Um, very first thing I'm going to do is pull up the program, and what it's going to prompt me for is it's going to say, does this problem have any variables in it? This particular problem does not, so I would choose option one press enter and then it says okay what do you want do you want the arithmetic sequence do you want the series do you want the geometric sequence or do you want the geometric series uh, in this case this is an arithmetic series for the reasons that I just mentioned <clears throat> so what I would do is I would choose option two press enter the first thing the <clears throat> the next thing that the program is going to prompt me for is he's going to say what's the first or what's the term so I like to I would start with the first term the value of the first term is 1. Uh, second term, the value of the second term is 2. All right. Uh, all you need in order to generate uh, an arithmetic sequence is two terms, two terms and two values. Uh, now, after I press enter, now it's saying, what do you want? Do you want me to find the sum or do you want to know the number of terms that contributes to a sum? Uh, and hopefully I can show you option two, but what we're looking at right now, we just want to find the sum, so it would be option one. So press enter. So then the next thing that you're going to see is it's going to say, what do I start the sum from? So we're going to start the sum from one and then go to 60. Press enter, and it says that the sum of six, the first 60 positive integers is 1,830. All right, done. Next problem. All right, this is, these are taken from the blue book from the math level one and two exam. Um, I wanted to show you how, how the program handles problems that have variables in it. So let me start with this. So the very, the problem that I'm looking at would be, let me adjust the camera a little bit. So let me zoom in just a little bit, or I'm zooming out. All right, what it says here is it says, what numbers should be added to each of the three numbers, one, seven, and 19, so that the resulting three numbers form a geometric progression? So this basically is saying, I've got three numbers here, um, and if I, add a, if I add the same number to each three of these numbers, it will uh, result in a geometric uh, sequence. What is that number? Now you can do this by back solving and basically using the numbers and going in and adding it and finding out if it results in a geometric sequence. Um, but since I have my handy dandy calculator in my program here, I'm just gonna go this way. So in this case, we're trying to find the term or the number that if we add it, would give us a geometric sequence. So I'm going to say, yes, this has a variable, and I'll show you why. So I'll choose option two, and we want to find the geometric sequence, so it would be option three. And so the very first term that we have is we have the number one, and then we're adding a number to it, right? So, but we don't know what that number is, so I said it was x. And then the second term. Second term, same thing. We're going to take the second number and we're going to add x to that as well. And then we're going to have the third term and we're going to add a number 
the same number to that. So it's 19 plus x. Now, whenever you're using the variable piece of this sequence pro uh, program, you have to have a minimum of three terms, right? Generally, when you're trying to find an arithmetic sequence, you only need two terms. If you're looking for uh, a geometric sequence, you only need two terms. But when there are variables involved, you need to have a minimum of three terms, which we have here. So now, press enter. So now the program is going to say sometimes there are more, there's more than one answer that would make a sequence a sequence. So it's saying, can you help me out by telling me where you want me to start this search? So I generally just use the middle number. Uh, in this case, the middle number is four, so I'll guess four. And then I'll let the program do its thing. And then it tells me that the number that you would add to those three numbers to get a geometric sequence is actually five. Now, to verify that, we can go look at the y equals. What the program does is it takes this, these numbers and it actually generates a geometric sequence and it stores it in the y1 um, place so that if you wanted to graph it or, if, or more importantly if you wanted to look at the table, which we'll do here, you'll see. Um, let me go, I want to start the table at 1. And as you can see, the very first term is 6, the second term is 12, the third term is 24. And if we go back to the original problem, you'll see that if you add 5 to the first one, you'll get 6. If you add 5 to the second one, you get 12. If you add 5 to the third one, you get 24. So this is indeed a geometric sequence. All right, pretty straightforward. Here's another problem. Here's another problem that, um, that I wanted to show you um, to demonstrate how you could use this program again. Um, this one is similar to the one we just did, except that it's an arithmetic sequence and it, and it actually gave you variables, right? Okay, so it says here, in the, <clears throat> in the increasing sequence above, the first term is y, and the difference between any two consecutive terms is 3. What is the value of the fourth term in the sequence? So in, this, in the, the terms that they give you are the first one is y, the second one is 2y plus 7, the third one is y plus 6. So, so let's go back to the program again. Uh, get out of here. All right, so now if you just press enter again, it'll prompt you again. So does this problem have variables? Yes, it does. So we'll go to option 2. And now we're trying to find what that we're trying to find the fourth term, but in order to find the fourth term, we've got to figure out what the sequence actually is. So it's an arithmetic sequence. The first term would be, uh, instead of using y, you have to use x for variables. Uh, that's the way I've written the program. So the very first term is x. The second term would be 2x plus 7. The third term is x plus 6. All right, press enter. Again, it's going to prompt you for a guess. Uh, and again, I would use the middle term. The middle term there is 5. So I'll put 5 there. And so it's saying that the, that the, uh, the variable is actually a negative 4. So it's saying that the very first term is a negative 4. The second term would be 2 times a negative 4 plus 7, which would be a negative 1. And the third term is a negative 4 plus 6, which would be 2. If we go and we look at the table, that's what we would find. A negative 4, a negative 1, and 2. In this particular problem, we're actually looking for the fourth term. So the fourth term is 5. So we're done. So the answer for this problem is C. All right. Now, let me go back to the um, blue book because there's another problem that I wanted to show you. Um, this one, it's number 40, and this one comes from the Math 1 exam. Okay, it says, at the end of 1990, the population of a certain town was 6,250 people. Excuse me. If the population increased 
at the rate of 3.5% each year, what will be the population of the town at the end of 2005? So what I would do here is I would say, okay, this is basically an exponential growth problem, which is, is, is very similar to a geometric sequence. So um, we don't have variables here, we just have numbers, so we would choose no to the question of do we have variables. And then we are dealing with a geometric sequence, so we'd go to option three. Now, generally when I'm doing um, exponential growth problems, I usually like to get the initial value, and I set that equal to z uh, as a zero term. And then I said the value for that would be 6250. So the initial value of the town at 1990 was 6250. And then I need another term. Remember, you need two terms in order to generate an exponential function. So, or geometric sequence. Uh, in, this, in this case, what I would do is I'd take the 6250 and then I would multiply it times 1.035. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, the initial population was 6250, and it's growing by 3.5%. So that's what the 1.035 represents. Now, so I've got my two points. Now, so the 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 um, the program is gonna is prompting you. Well, what term do you want to know the value of? We want to know what the value uh, is at 2005. In 2005. If you count from 1990 to 2005, that would be 15 years. So basically, you want the 15th term. And it tells us that the population uh, in 2005 would be 10,470.93. So we could round it up to 10,471. If you look at the choices, uh, choice E is the closest one. It's 10,470. Um, so that would be the answer to that particular question. All right. Uh, let's do, let's try one more, uh, and if we have time, maybe two more. Uh, this is the infamous red book for the ACT guide, and I wanted to show one problem that I want, I want you guys to see and to understand kind of what I'm doing here. Now, this is a number 54 problem. Uh, and basically, uh, it says the table below gives some X and Y pairs that satisfy a linear relationship. What does Z equal? All right. So generally, you would use the slope formula or something like that in order to find um, the equation and use it, or find the slope. And then you can figure out using the slope what Z would be. I would, on the other hand... A linear, a linear uh, function is basically similar to an arithmetic sequence. So I would use this program again. So what I would do is I'd say, okay, does it have any variables? Um, actually, it does have variables. Um, we can do this any number of ways. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how I would do it. Um, so um, I'm gonna say, no, it doesn't have any variables. And then I'm going to say, okay, it's an arithmetic sequence since it's, we know that linear pairs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the, the linear pairs. Um, so it's a, it's a negative 2 for the first term. And the value is a negative 7. And then I'm going to take the next term, which is 2. And, and the value at, at 2 is 5. Okay. And then press Enter. Okay, and then it's going to say, what term do you want? So when, I, when it asks for the what term, I'm just going to put in a negative 3. And so then it's going to tell me, well, the value when it's negative 3 is a negative 10. So our choice here would be a negative 10. All right. So um, this is a number. Let me get this in here. This is a number 54 problem on from an ACT exam, which is generally considered a more difficult question. But with this program, it's just push and play. Um, so that's that. Let me see. I have one more. Let's see if I can squeeze in one more um, problem. Not sure if I can get this one in time. It's right here. Let me 
move up a little bit and get it flat here. Okay, this is a number 53 from one of the exams, and it says, on his first day as a telemarketer, Marshall made 24 calls. His goal was to make five more calls on each successive day than he had made the day before. If Marshall met but did not exceed his goal, how many calls had he made in all after spending exactly 20 days making making calls as a telemarketer? Now, this there's a lot of stuff going on here, but essentially what they're doing is they're saying he started with